Now, I've never seen this before. That's why I wanted to bring it to you. Let me lay down the groundwork for this. Any kind of censorship is somebody using their power, their prestige, or their authority to silence somebody else who wants to convey a message. That's what it is. Inherently, it violates the golden rule because I don't want to be silenced. You don't want to be silenced. Nobody wants to be silenced if they want to speak. So the golden rule is do to others what you would want done to you. Conversely, don't do to others what you wouldn't want done to you. So when somebody is trying to make you be quiet when you want to speak or convey a message, they're doing that with the implied threat of force and violence. So they're trying to silence you by using violence. So censorship is silence by violence. And that's why I'm against it because it's inherently evil. Now, I've never seen this before. This user named Missouri Battle Flag posted something under my video, which is a video that I did exposing what the state and local authorities did when they went to the house of Lucas Gage because he posted something online and they responded to an anonymous caller. The name of that video is state and local cops came to my home over a tweet. It was an exclusive from Lucas Gage. But under this video that I posted on Twitter, which also went on on YouTube, Missouri Battle Flag writes because he was what he was trying to do was leave a comment under my YouTube video. And he says, YouTube says I can't post commentary from fire attorneys. Now, who are the fire attorneys? Fire is the foundation for individual rights and expression. And if you'll remember, they actually went to bat for our friend Jeff Gray filing two, at least two lawsuits on his behalf saying, hey, he's got the unalienable individual right to stand in a public place with any kind of sign that he wants, saying anything that he wants. It just so happens that Jeff Gray's sign, sign reads, you know, for the most part, God bless the homeless vets. And for some reason, people have a problem with that and want to eliminate that free speech. Guys, we got to stand against this, but I want to show you because I've never seen this before. Missouri Battle Flag says that he tried to comment on my post on YouTube, but I want to show you, he shows us in real time what actually happened. Let me expand this so that you can see it. Okay, so you can see that he's trying to comment under my video. Here's the video right here. Here's where he's going to try to comment. Okay, okay. All right, so go so ahead. I received a couple of uh, things. I'm actually going to just turn the volume off. Okay, so I'll show you exactly what he's posting. He's basically cutting and pasting something from Fire's tweet. Starting out, the categorical exceptions are. And I'll show you how it ends just so we can get a marker on exactly what he's trying to post here. Look what YouTube wrote. YouTube wrote in his attempt to post a comment under my video, YouTube says request contains an invalid argument. And then they wouldn't let him post his comment under my video. Now on the back end of my video, I allow all comments. I don't care what you guys say. I will never censor, no matter how ridiculous, no matter how gross, no matter how objectionable, no matter how offensive, post whatever you want to under my videos. I don't care. I'll never censor you because I feel like sunlight is the greatest disinfectant. If you say something stupid, everybody should see it. If you say something intelligent, everybody should see it. So he tried to put, what he tried to post was, this cut and paste from Fire's post on their on their Twitter or X X page. It starts out: the First Amendment protects a vast range of speech and expressive conduct, but it doesn't protect all speech and expressive conduct. Now, this is pretty lengthy, so I'm not going to read the entire thing. But remember, the the word back from YouTube was. This request contains an invalid argument. We will read some of this because I think it's very important on what YouTube deems as invalid. Could it be valid? Yes. Could YouTube's opinion about it be wrong? Yes. Could YouTube's opinion about it be right? Yes, but you'll never see it. You'll never see it under my video. You'll, you'll never be able to make 
a determination for yourself whether you agree or disagree with the comment because the comment can't be left. So censorship is a double-edged sword. Censorship is not just cutting off the message of the messenger. It's a cutting off of the ears who want to hear what that message is. So it's not just, let's say they want to ban a book. They're banning the book. So basically they're banning what the author wants to say and convey with that book. But in the banning of the book, they're telling, let's say millions of people who want to read that book. Hey, we think that this is not good for you to read. Who has that kind of power to determine what a group of people can or cannot have access to? That's the lunacy and the immorality of censorship. Now, what the guy wrote could be good for society. It could be bad for society. But isn't that up to you to decide? Has has Google and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all these social media platforms and the oligarchs that control these platforms, have they become our internet parents? Do you want an internet parent protecting you from freedom of speech? Are you that frail where you need somebody to step in between the messenger who wants to convey the message and the group who wants to hear the message? You want somebody to be an arbiter for what you can or can't hear? That's ridiculous. You're not a child anymore. You're an adult. You don't need that kind of protection. What if it's information you got to hear so you can make some life changes and set yourself on a course that's going to benefit you? Yeah, there are probably derogatory things that aren't good to read. There are probably vicious things that people write that are that's probably bad for society. But what's worse for society is somebody determining what you can or can't listen to, what you can or can't read, what you can or can't watch, or what you can or cannot have access to on the internet. So Fire says, and it looks like some of this stuff, I did, I glanced over it. I, I don't know if I agree with all of it because I haven't intently read it, but you won't be able to read it on YouTube because you won't be able to have access to it because they, they say it is an invalid argument. This isn't worthy of us allowing you to put it up on our platform. They say, It, that's the First Amendment, doesn't protect all speech and expressive conduct. The categorical exceptions to the First Amendment are few, narrow, and carefully defined. To protect freedom of expression, they must remain that way, but they do exist, each for good reason. As the campuses grapple with, and I think one of the reasons they won't allow this on the YouTube platform is is because it deals with the tenuous situation going on in the Middle East right now. As campuses grapple with students and faculty expressing raw anger, fear, and shock over the events in the Middle East, it is useful to revisit the boundaries between protected expression and actionable misconduct. And then it goes over examples of what violence is, what true threats and intimidation are. And it goes over specifically what some people on the Palestinian side are saying about Israelis and what some Israelis are saying about those on the Palestinian side. So maybe that's what they're talking about. But even in that case, it is not valid. It's not legitimate for somebody to step in between a messenger and a message that you want to hear. So getting back to what Missouri battle flag posted that YouTube won't let him post from from fire, by the way, again, fire is foundation for individual rights and expression. You won't be able to see that on any, under any YouTube video, because they believe that the request contains an invalid argument. They've deemed it invalid. Don't you want to have access to that? So you can determine whether it's invalid or not. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comment section below. I've never seen this before. This is my first exposure to it. Let me know what you think about this. Do you think that YouTube should step between you and a message that's, that a messenger is trying to convey? Do you think they should determine for you what you can or can't hear, what you can or can't read? Do you think censorship in all cases is wrong? Do you think censorship in some cases is okay and acceptable and for the benefit of society? And if you do think that, where's the line? Who gets to determine what you can or can't listen to?
Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know. Don't forget to subscribe to my email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. If you want to support the channel further, the links are in the description. Grab a shirt, become a channel member. I appreciate you tuning in, but you know, just engage in the content. Leave your thoughts. I really want to hear what you have to say. Remember, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. And indifference to this notion is the means by which the people have and will secure their own oppression. Let's stop securing our own oppression and let's start today. I'll see you guys in the next video.